Okay, as per Blue Jacket's instructions, I've done a couple things so far early on the kit. Uh, as you might have uh, seen here, got a close up on the uh, one of the mahogany benches. What I've basically done is taken some, uh, sorry, not that, some Floca glaze. I know that's for those railroad colors, but the glaze works pretty good. It is oil based, so you're going to need some thinner brush cleaner, as I so promptly held up earlier. Uh, basically, what you want to do, and the reason you want to do this, is because uh, when you go to glue this, if you use super glue, when you do apply a secondary coating of stain, it's going to uh, create a dead zone within the stain. So, what you can do to remedy this is pre stain all the parts. Now, I haven't pre stained all the parts yet, but you can kind of see where I'm going with this. The mahogany is especially important because uh, that definitely takes stain very differently. Uh, other things I've done here, you can't really see it, but here's the original color. You can see that kind of white, that's basswood. I did use a uh, acrylic stain I tried out, always in the effort to be cheaper. This is basically by Folk Art. This is available through Michaels or uh, sometimes even Walmart. They're less than two bucks. It's water-based, easy cleanup. This is oak, so it's a little, maybe not quite as dark as I would have liked to match up the mahogany. But eventually, after that's stained up and the frames are all done, then I'm looking to uh, put some glaze over that as well. So that's it for now. Uh, keep watching. All right, moving on. What we've got here is uh, the basic cutting of the frames. And uh, basically, what you need to do is uh, get a cheap piece of glass, put the frame on a, a hard surface floor, if you drafting desk, if you got it. Basically, and then if you have it, there's this uh, Exacto. Basically, it's a razor blade holder, and you're going to basically just cut along the lines. Now, if you look on the plan, you can't really see this very well, but there are these uh, scribe black lines. You're going to base, you're going to look at your razor blade and guillotine down on those black lines. Now, some of the black lines were corners, uh, so you're going to fill them all in, and eventually, what you're going to have is a frame that looks like that. Now, you're also going to use uh, the corner pieces, basically a uh, a uh, one thirty second by three sixteen as a frame plate to base to keep the uh, corners glued. I haven't d cut the notches yet, but uh, that'll be coming. So, uh, on to the next part. Alright, my apologies for not coming back a little earlier. I did lose an entire uh, section of film here. And uh, this is like one of those cooking shows where you see the whole thing remarkably laid out. This is the uh, this is the basic frame model. Alright, and I know I lost, uh, I lost some construction steps. But basically, you're going to compare it to how it looks on the plans. Uh, some stuff that I ran into that I really wasn't expecting was uh, fastening the forward part, fastening the aft part. Okay, I highly, and I mean highly, recommend that you uh, pre-soak the forward parts or even the whole thing really to uh, to get the maximum curvature that's going to be required on this hull. I did end up snapping the stem, snapping the stern. I had to put some uh, joiner plates in due to the fact that the sheer amount of super glue I used on this. Eventually I snapped the back part and I had to use a uh, filler piece. So uh, I think realistically uh, the reason I didn't uh, put it on film was the sheer amount of swearing that I did. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind 
is uh, this part. This is this is going to be the top of the gunnel. It will be covered with some mahogany plate, but realistically, this is all going to get sheared off. So these cool cross members you see that doesn't make a lot of sense to you at first. All of this is going to be uh, leveled flat. So anyway, sorry for the uh, sorry for the jump ahead on build, but definitely definitely things to do with the with this is it definitely soaked the wood as a as a not veteran boat builder but this isn't my first rodeo definitely should have uh, realized that and done it from the get-go the nice thing about a uh, slightly wet wood especially bass wood is uh, it completely glues uh, better so should have gone that way don't make the same mistake I did uh, the other thing that to realize and the reason I've got this giant piece of wood here and all these pins you see all over the place. Basically the boat, in order to maintain the form to get the basswood to kind of congeal, was uh, I essentially laid the plan straight down on the wood. And it does have, if you look at the top part of the plan there, it has all these wonderful little black marks that that's where your the top of your uh, your rib is going to go so if you use that put the glass on top I didn't put the glass on top basically flip the boat over matched it up to make sure the frames were true around there and then uh, basically pinned through the top of the frames to hold it down while I was truing it up uh, if you soak the wood this will go together lickety split with a minimum amount of swearing. If you don't, you will uh, want to make sure your kids aren't nearby or anybody else that gets flustered by a, a high degree of swearing. All right, the next part in construction will be the frame we'll be putting on the uh, planking. So hopefully that'll go a little easier. I'll uh, I'll uh, catch you in a second. All right, you may have noticed that uh, I do have the garbage plank set. Looks like that. Stem's a little tough. Did have to do a little bit of shaping towards the back. Uh, according to the plans and instructions, it should be pretty flat right along the bottom. I mean, these things were designed to nest into each other. So, uh, not a lot to this pro part of the process. Um, the planking does come in these cool larger sheets. Uh, it could pretty much just be popped out. The stuff's uber thin. I recommend a razor blade. And uh, I'll pause it for a minute while I set that up. The nice thing about these uh, these planks, especially the laser cut stuff, is uh, you've got these uh, little scribe marks that are left, so you can pretty much see what's holding it in and what's not. So you just go right to those little scribe marks, cut it right out. Hope you, can, you can't really see what I'm doing, but anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. This kind of comes right out. The reason you want to use razor blades, and I found out this first one, is uh, when you pull it out, you end up pulling some of the wood off. So make sure you be really careful with that. So, what you've really got to be careful with in getting these planks set is uh, getting the front and the back lined up. So the front should have a really deep arrow looking chine. You can kind of tell it that way. Don't glue anything until you've test fit the, I mean, if there was ever a measure twice or three times or four times scenario, this is it. So you're just going to bend it down here. And uh, really that's, that's pretty much all there is to how it goes on. Okay. You just kind of. Now, 
it's super critical that before you glue anything, you need to get this stern part lined up perfect. So uh, you should really plan on gluing that nice and tight before you uh, continue. So this, this back part has to be totally set before you try and bend it anymore onto the uh, rest of the frames. Uh, for super glue, I'm using the old Hobbytown USA Instacure. It's a little thick, but uh, and again, have a little bit of water with it. You can just dab a little bit of water into the joints. That does seem to act as a poor man's super glue accelerant. So, and then obviously make sure that before you even do this, the instructions tell you to to do some basic shaping on the frames themselves. And you notice I had to like, you see a little bit of a. Uh, I can get a little closer. I had to get a little bit of framing done, a little bit of sanding on the frame. So it happens. But uh, the biggest thing is if you don't set it up really well, what you're going to find is it's going to overlap, overlap the uh, basically the uh, the bow piece. So what you don't, what you want to happen is you want to have a nice little bit of nice little bit of sandwich in the front but you don't want a lot now there will be a big there will be a piece that's going to be a runner on the front that will cover that up a little more just like on the real boats they realized that a lot of the stuff bumped and grinded so they kind of gave you a uh, a stem piece they called it a gripe piece because on lifeboats the gripes are what attaches it to the main boat so anyway i'll uh i'll glue some stuff uh, glue that, get that first plank set. Uh, the other thing I would like to tell you before I forget, Pittsburgh 22-piece spring clamps. There's 22 of these little guys in there. And I'll show you why that's an advantage. I did see what they look like. The, uh, the heads of them bend a little bit. I did buy clothespins. I didn't find that super satisfactory. If you've got a Harbor Freight nearby, or you can order from Harbor Freight. These were like four dollars for 22 of these things. And uh, the nice thing about it is these clamps, the way the clearance is run, is uh, they fit perfect between these frames. Uh, that was a happy accident. I totally didn't plan that. So, uh, all right. See you. In a minute. Okay. You're seeing how the uh, planks are going on. Just a little under there. What I'm going to do is put a little glue there. And uh, it's going on pretty nice. Just take a little bit of water. Just kind of douse it up a little bit. Put a little on the plank. And uh, what I'll do here, you don't want to go too far, but uh, what I'm going to do is put a little glue on the uh, frame. Not too much. And just run it along. Run it along till the next frame. Kind of drag it along. Make sure I don't get any on the inside if I can help it. So what I can do, what I've got there, I want to make sure it, uh, it stays flat. So I've got to pull this in a little bit and down. So then what I'll do, and you'll, you'll see how these work out great. What did I tell you? Pretty cool, huh? Hook that to the frame. And uh, make sure that fits. It's a little tight. You'll feel it. It'll feel weird. And make sure it doesn't skip out a little bit. I'm going to put an extra on the next frame as well. So what you should have. You shouldn't see a lot of daylight coming through this thing. 
should be very uh, very tight. You don't want to see a lot of gaps in it. You want to make sure you cover that. It's a little gap in the back, but uh, what I've been doing is, uh, as a gap filler, I'm using regular Elmer's glue. That adds a lot of strength to it, and then uh, kind of pushing it down. Now we're getting to the point. I'll pull this a little tighter. Anyway, so far so good. Make sure you don't glue this thing down. So just like that. Wipe off any excess super glue you might have on the bottom. Okay. Always remember to put the cap on your glue. So far, so good. And uh, I'll show you what the finished product looks like once this is all done setting up. Sorry about the cut to photos. So uh, I know this looks dramatically different, and again, more skip steps <coughs> as the previous photos have showed a little bit of a build up here. Uh, you'll notice from the last uh, several movie clips, what we've got is we basically, uh, I finished planking, so the three, three layers of planks went on pretty much similar. What I did have to do was uh, you have to sand this section, then lay the plank so it looks something like this. Okay, So it's literally sand the uh, bottom corner and lay it flat. These are illustrated in the instructions. Definitely take that serious. So uh, what I did for this build was uh, I made sure the the planks were lined up on the stern, fared them around to the forward part. Okay, The stern gave me my best point of reference, so it would be basically super gluing and then kind of spot hitting all the frames and again uh, using all the clamps. After this step was completed and uh, I fared it in, you, I had a lot of excess left on the uh, the bow and the stern, or on the bow primarily and the uh, gunnel. I, uh, once that was secured I basically used, and you can see in the picture, used the uh, razor blade tool to uh, shear off what was left of the uh, stanchion supports. Okay, So, uh, with that, uh, I've used the razor blade, followed along, and uh, trimmed the basswood. Now keep in mind, uh, this is uh, your rail, or the structure of your rail, but it won't be the top of your rail. There will be a couple, uh, some basswood that will lay over here and that I'm going to carve out in the next step or uh, see a few pictures. Uh, the next phase here you're going to see I'm going to paint the inside. I'm going to try and leave the frames in natural wood because I think that looks pretty sharp. The bow is going to need a lot more work. You can see that, that one of the planks didn't quite fare out right. I should have really sanded it up quite a bit more. But I didn't and uh, the glue had set so now I'm going to use a uh, basically like a bow cap or as a uh, or as they like to call it, a bow gripe. Anyway, so we'll uh, see you back in a minute. Alright, <clears throat> we've taken the uh, basically the six inch strips of basswood and uh, you're going to cut contours into the basswood based on the external framework. It's going to look a little like you're vandalizing your model here. Uh, the instructions say to take basically cut it into six pieces and envision what's going to happen here at least the world according to me here is once this is dry you're going to sand this down or cut it down and then sand it and then you're going to be uh, basically putting the mahogany runner to cover up the gap so it will eventually look, you know, kind of pretty pretty sweet, really. So 
it's really hard to envision it, but the, the instructions literally say this. So I'm not entirely sure how they cut down the internals, but uh, anyway, so a uh, little bit of gap. Basically, it's to uh, flatten out the contour. And uh, yeah, so this will be very interesting to see how this comes out. Uh, what is kind of cool though is it does flush up with the uh, the bow post and of course uh, you may have noticed the biggest distinct difference is the fact that uh, I've got the inside painted gray as promised I did try and uh, leave as much of the uh, internal streaks uh, wood stained wood color I did get a little oopsies on there but uh, I don't think it'll be noticeable in the final model so that's it for now. All right, there was uh, another session of uh, Tourettesian swearing that you missed out on this one. The I didn't think that it was going to be easy to cut down these uh, basswood. I was 100% correct on this. The basically what I tried to do unsuccessfully is sort of a uh, whittling mode with a uh, razor blade along the basically along the strakes that failed miserably now uh, uh, although in the kit you'll notice you get a uh, large quantity of basswood I made the uh, you know assumption that I would be able to uh, have some left over that was absolutely not the case you can see that I uh, tried several times to get this correct basically what would happen was I would I was cutting it down, taking like really thin slivers off. If you could see that. Like that. But eventually what would happen is I'd take a huge chunk out and then I'd end up having to restart the entire thing. What I did come up with was uh, once I got a piece relatively measured out on the model would kind of just sort of take it off like that and then uh, remeasure it on the basswood. I think the entire process could have been circumvented by maybe using some thick cardboard or something like that, cutting the pattern I wanted ahead of time and then uh, you know cutting that out of the basswood then uh, gluing that on. I will tell you that uh, this will become your, uh, and I'm using a 150C aluminum oxide. It's probably, I would don't think I'd want to go much finer grit than uh, 150. Uh, you probably could get away with 200, but uh, what you end up doing is literally sanding down the excess. So, once that's done, and you do the inside, there are some scraped spots on the strikes that you can kind of see where I took a little bit of the stain off. That's not a huge deal. I have, uh, you know, acrylic stain I can put into that. So, anyway, the uh, definitely use some kind of uh, measurement metric such as cardboard or something before you pre-cut. Uh, you can kind of see I still do have gaps in here, but I'm not horribly worried about it. It's not that visible from the side. Uh, my great grandfather and I used to build uh, lap strake boots, and one of the things we used to do when we had them ready was we'd take the entire boat down to a uh, creek and we'd just sink it, and that just let the planks swell up. And uh, we did it dry, uh, cock it a little bit set it again, let it sink, swell up, and re it again. Then eventually after that was done, we'd seal it and paint it. So, uh, the unfortunate part about this particular boat model is that uh, you really don't have the opportunity to, uh, you know, sink it, cock it, and swell it like you would on a real size boat. So that's kind of unfortunate. Anyway, the, the other problem area I noticed I came to was the stern. Basically, uh, fairing in the uh, final portion 
I probably still need a little bit of sanding left on this, but uh, where it fares in compared to uh, where the under the uh, under under strake is, it takes a little bit of work. So uh, I thinned it out on purpose to the stern. I just think it looks kind of distinctive and kind of neat. Uh, there's not as much rail back here. Obviously, it, it really chined in. So anyway, well, that's it for now. Uh, continuing on. I have uh, test fit a few of the benches. The other thing about this is uh, this whole, if you look, you kind of see, uh, you're gonna definitely going to need a nice, neat work area to do this in, and you're gonna probably going to need a shop vac with all the wood and splinters and stuff that you're going to spread around. Uh, after that, it's all, it's all sandpaper dust. So, uh, it looks like the seats are going to fit in good. It looks like, uh, much to my chagrin, I may have actually uh, lined up, especially the, uh, the mast hole. Yes, I said mast hole correctly with the mast step hole. So if you can see that, it looks like it, that will line up actually nice. The, uh, the seat strake looks like it's going to line up well, kind of towards the top here. I'm going to measure that out. The, the, sh the forward... Sh <laughs> some tongue twisters tonight. The forward sh seat strake uh, is going to pretty much support the entire uh, first seat. Because it, uh, it kind of like... It's realistically just going to sit on that where it kind of curls up forward. So, anyway, that's it for now. Hope that's helpful. Uh, the instructions are actually, we're almost at the end of this. So there's only a few more steps. And we'll be going over there, over and over those steps uh, pretty soon. So, see you in a bit. Okay, final design assembly. Got the mahogany strips. I'll show you the picture uh, of assembly before this or during this. Basically, it was glued flat and flush. Didn't take a lot. Curved up the ends. Uh, the nose was interesting in that basically I ran it straight through and then used a uh, four piece to plug. Prior to that, Used some uh, remainder basswood, the thin stuff from the st from the uh, strakes, and uh, glued it in place, giving me the uh, the uh, great piece. So, also took the seats, measured the top of the seats, and put the seat rail in. All right. A few uh, last touch-ups before we put the seats in. you notice in the front I've put a couple uh, seating cleats in. Clearly I've made some kind of uh, mislaps in judgment on the forward bow of the boat. Because if you look at it, the forward seat doesn't quite line up with the uh, seating rail. Which, you might have been able to pull it forward and uh, push it into that, but honestly the, the forwards, it's not really so much of a seat as it is a kneeling board anyway, so I'm wondering whether that was on purpose. So uh, prior to me gluing the seats in, I'm going to do uh, one final touch up with the acrylic paint, my uh, coveted dolphin gray color, and uh, I'm going to really, I have done a little bit of filler with, uh, with some Elmer's glue. And the biggest thing is like when you're covering up is uh, I like to try and take out the uh, shiny spots that might have been left over with the super glue. So if you've got any shiny spots or any uh, fill areas with glue, make sure you take those out. So just going to kind of jam the paint in there. Shiny, uh, I'm kind of at a premium. There aren't there aren't too many areas. Just go really light with the paint, especially for touch-up. That way it doesn't change the general color. And you don't end up having to completely repaint 
inside of the hull. So, um, and then there's a little bit of uh, spots that I missed up on the bow. And the reason I'm doing this is because the next step will be the uh, next step will be gluing the seats in. Now keep in mind on the real model. Sorry, not the real model, but the uh, on the uh, actual dory, these seats were removable because this was a nesting boat. So, I don't know, if you want to really make it close to prototype, you don't necessarily need to glue the seats in, but uh, I don't necessarily have that kind of need. So, anyway, that'll be that. Okay, <clears throat> seats are in place. As mentioned before, there's your two uh, lower chines. The rear stern seat is a little looser fit than I would have liked, uh, but the rest all uh, all went in on the seat rail very nicely. Uh, probably the easiest part of the entire assembly procedure. So, uh, if the boat does have a little mismatch on the frame, you may have to really push the seat in to get it to fit. One other thing I forgot to, I neglected to uh, mention was the uh, sort of the heart bow piece. It's going to take a little bit of shaping. I did end up having to cut it at uh, very side angles to fit into the uh, the gunnel strake here, the gunnel rail, and then uh, just kept sanding it until it was uh, flush. So that came out pretty well. So, all right, uh, next step. Okay, next step is the. Uh, basically the oar locks. The oar locks on dories were basically just pins. Uh, I guess if you wanted to you could make your own modern oar lock. Uh, some photo etch brass or, uh, or metal. Basically what I've done is uh, I've uh, compared the uh, boat to the plan. I found the general location of where the uh, oar lock holes need to go and I've used a uh, basically a T-square or a uh, right angle measure to rough it out, kind of like eyeball based on where the bench is, kind of measured it over and duplicated the uh, oar lock holes using a uh, pencil. This has to set for the, uh, you're going to put the uh, 1 16th inch pins into these holes uh, and uh, the general placement of the oar lock, oar lock pins is uh, right ahead of the uh, main benches. There's only a couple places that the boat would have been rowed from and that's uh, these uh, last three bench seats. So these are definitely, if you think about the way a rower would sit, you know, butt on the seat, legs forward, and the uh, oar locks, oar lock pins would have been where the, uh, you know, overall the arms and the torso were in line with the shoulder. So it's got to make sense to you a little bit based on where they should be. Obviously there's a stern rowing position and uh, that's about it. There's no rowing positions up forward. This is where the mast step would have been and the uh, the kneeling bench for the gripes would have been. So, uh, like I said, you can, use it, you can use the plans, you can kind of eyeball it, but the potential for this looking kind of silly is pretty great. So you definitely want to measure, uh, measure a few times where your pins are going to go. So, uh, Sorry, let's see what that is. Now, and again, the cap rail, these are 1 16th inch dowels, so theoretically, you should use a uh, 1 16th inch drill bit. Now, you don't need to use a ginormous Ryobi drill like I do, but I seem to use it for everything, so I'm going to give that a shot. Uh, they don't, the, the holes don't need to be plunged super deep either. Now, you do have the, uh, you do have the, uh, uh, you know, this is just the uh, the basswood cap rail, but you do have a little bit of wood underneath. But you shouldn't be drilling much past that. So what I'm going to do next is drill the holes just through the cap rail so that it connects underneath, and this will give a little extra holding power for the basswood cap rail to the uh, the basswood plank below. And uh, then I'll cut the the uh, 1 16th dowel into uh, equal, basically equal pieces and uh, kind of plant them and eyeball them 
and uh, glue them in place. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so what I've done is uh, drilled the holes. I've already placed my first pin, which if I can get it on the screen here. So I placed my first pin there. Uh, the easiest way I think I've found to do this is I take a common object, like I've got my file here, and what I do is I take the, the dowel, I place it in the hole, some stuff here. Place it in the hole, kind of twist it in, measure it with the file or the common object that you've got that gives you about the length that you want. And I've uh, I take my wire cutters, my wire cutters aren't exactly a fine woodworking tool, and I just cut it off. But I'll be careful, this thing will go flying like you wouldn't believe. So uh, in order to glue it, I put a little bit of white glue over here. I don't seem to need it. I don't really need super glue for this, and I honestly don't want to worry about discoloring the rail for the staining purposes. So while I'm pushing it in the hole, I'm also giving a little, little twist. So it's going to look like that. It's going to stick up obnoxiously. I'll uh, basically measure it against my file. And I will simply cut it off. It'll give me a little pin rail looking like that. I will take the file and uh, kind of smooth those up a little bit. But uh, essentially that's all there is to it. Uh, I don't want the I don't want the pins to look too obnoxious. So uh, I'll keep going that way and uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. As promised, the uh, pin rails, or the uh, orlock, sorry, pin rails is a, I would say a sailing ship term. So I'm using the, uh, using my file set to uh, shape these up. Don't pay a lot for your file set. Go to Harbor Freight. Pay this three dollars for these things. They're invaluable. Uh, it will eventually grate on your nerves just as it's grating on your nerves that I'm uh, filing on camera here. The uh, pins in the diagram are nicely shaped and rounded over. You can go as crazy with that as you want, I guess. So uh, that's it for the pins. And that kind of completes uh, final construction on that, the actual hull portion. The rest will be uh, accessories. So uh, oars and uh, and uh, line bucket and a few other things here. So, see you in a minute. Okay, a couple extra steps today. What I'm uh, looking to do is uh, work on the mast and the uh, the oars. I've got one oar started. Uh, you can kind of see what I've done here. It doesn't look like much. Looks like some kind of windmill paddle right now, but. Uh, I'm using uh, white glue on this one uh, to uh, give it a little more strength to hold the uh, paddle in. I could have used super glue, but uh, I could kind of take my time on this one. Basically, what I've done is uh, you take one of the uh, one of the uh, medium-sized dowels in the kit. I'm drawing blank on which one. The uh, it's less than a, it's less than I think it's one of the eighth. So. I've marked off according to the plans, you can't really see it, but measured off like how big the tip of the oar is, the uh, the length of the uh, actual paddle, and then what I've done is I've taken a uh, a bandsaw, or a scroll saw, sorry, and just cut straight down all the way to the uh, to the line. I have left the, the dowel a little bit long, uh, just to give myself a little extra oopsie room. Uh, once that's done, I uh, took a file and hollowed out as much as I could along the front. Let's see if I can get this. You can kind of see how that looks. Probably have a little excess glue I didn't get rid of as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 
So basically, it can it come out like that. Once that was uh, once that was glued, I basically ran it over sandpaper constantly to get the uh, the tip thinned out. I'm going to need to thin it out a little more. And once that's done, I'm going to use a little sandpaper to uh, shear out the end of the ore. And, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I, you probably will need a few extra dowels if you've never done this before. Uh, the other thing I had is I used my files, specifically my triangular file, to uh, basically cut in to the uh, the dowel, and this started the uh, basically making the handle. Once I cut myself a nice big triangular groove, I used the flat file, and then just kind of shaped it out a little bit. Same thing with the top of the uh, top of the handle. The handle actually came out pretty nice, as you can see. So, if as long as I don't screw up the actual uh, rest of the ore mechanism, I think I'm good. But uh, I'll put my uh, clips back on there. All right, and the mast is a, a quarter inch. And what you got to do, if you notice the uh, the hole is a is a square stock hole. And typically, on the to keep the mast from moving, they couldn't use a you know rounded hole. So what they did was they basically squared off the bottom. This kept the mast from twisting. So what I've done is uh, same thing with the ore handle. Uh, basically, cut in, cut in on the sides as much as I could. Basically, using the flat edge and then tapered back from there. So I've made myself a nice uh, square, you can see it, square groove. And uh, you'll know you've nailed it if it goes through and locks into the hole. Now there shouldn't be a lot of, there shouldn't be a lot of uh, fare on the mast meaning the mass shouldn't be more than like a few degrees for or aft. Hopefully, if anything, it's going to be aft. Uh, if you need to, you can adjust the uh, the taper on the bottom. If uh, you've messed up that process, you can adjust the taper a little bit. You can move it forward or backwards, depending on what you need. Uh, but be careful, this, this quarter inch dowel that they give you with the kit is almost the perfect length already to be uh, massed in the plans. And lastly, you've got to taper the uh, you got to taper the top, so it's basically just circular. So you can use your file. Basically, I went ran it over a bunch of sandpaper a bunch of times, and uh, that seemed to do the trick nicely. So when you do put the mast on, realize that the mast the uh, the dowel is not perfectly straight. So try and taper it towards whatever uh, whatever bend in the dowel you have. Okay couple of extra steps. Pretty much finished with the uh, ore. I can get it in the camera. The uh, I've left a little bit of excess right now and why I've done that is because I've got to construct a second ore and I would ideally like them to look similar. So uh, when I get to the second one I will probably sand them simultaneously. I recommend you do the same. Another step that I, I kind of neglected was uh, when you do your ore, ore locks, you want to measure the dowel to make sure it fits in the ore locks. And uh, what I mean by that is make sure the ore literally fits between the locks, if I could ever get my hands to work right just like that. So you could picture somebody using that to propel the boat. Okay. Uh, I did uh, put a layer of varnish on the mast while I was waiting, as well as the, uh, it's not the jib boom, it's basically the, the snotter, or the, uh, the other part of the uh, sail. I cut the notch in the bottom, and I tapered the top according to the plan. The top is actually what's going to hold the uh, the rope, the ring rope, to the top of the uh, the sheet. So 
I'm not sure I'm going to uh, put the sail up or down or not, but uh, at the very least, when these are stowed in the boat, uh, it's going to look pretty sharp. So, uh, anyway, that's that. And lastly, I did construct the coveted line bucket. Uh, I will tell you right now that uh, the piece of wood they give you if I have it or not. What's left of it? The, uh, the wood is only uh, so wide, so what you're going to have to do is basically cut, uh, measure out two pieces and cut it, and then do not try and dry set this planking because it's scribed, it's scribed planking. Uh, what will happen is it will just break. And uh, that's kind of what I got too. So what I did was uh, put the, uh, as always, when in doubt, put it in water. So I put it in water. I uh, submerged it for about an hour or two in warm water, and uh, then dry fitted a couple pieces here. I do have to sand down the top a little bit. Uh, even then, I did have a slight gap, which I filled with a very narrow piece of plank, which seems pretty reasonable. Uh, the instructions say to put some uh, paper around it. I think what I'm going to do is uh, probably stain it first and uh, then put the paper around and then stain the paper. So, But the uh, the line bucket actually came out okay. So I was very surprised. I used a lot of super glue. The nice thing about super glue is definitely use it while the water, while the more, while the the wood is still a little bit moist. That stuff will stick amazing. I don't know what it is about that. Uh, I don't know if it's, it works with the thin glue, but the insecure thick, when you uh, when you use a lot of water on wood, it is awesome. The water acts almost like an accelerator. It opens the pores of the wood from an air stand and uh, causes it to seal up nice. So there you go. A couple more steps started done. Okay, a lot of fine work on this one. The uh, first off, the uh, I did, I did construct the sail, build the sail, basically uh, held it up to the plans, the sailcloth included, folded about 9 16 so roughly uh, a little bit of edge in uh, on all four sides, used white glue to attach that, and uh, you notice it's kind of stiff, I uh, used uh, a uh, craft stiffener called uh, Mod Podge. I don't have it with me right now. But uh, anyway, lightly diluted coat of that. That gave it some stiffness. Uh, it will be a lot easier to work with. <clears throat> the direction said to sew the seams. I've tried this in the past. I don't think it looks very scale. It may look pretty sharp. Uh, so I ended up using a uh, brown colored pencil to uh, draw in the seams. The other thing nice is if you, uh, you kind of spread it around with your thumb a little bit, it does make the seam look a little warm, worn and uh, weathered. So, uh, finish off the line bucket with the stain. That looks pretty sharp. I'll put the line in in a little while. Uh, a lot of work on the mast right now. So, uh, this is called the uh, the snotter cleat, which goes on the. Uh, I'm assuming it's the port side of the boat. Either it seems to have to go to the port or the starboard side, depending on which side you have the snotter uh, mast on. So uh, that was basically done with a little bit of scrap wood, like this. And I, all I did was simply uh, cut it to shape as close as I could with the razor blade, and then used the handy dandy three sided triangular uh, file to make it. And uh, I did use a, a little bit of a vise, so I held it on one end, basically shaped it, cut the end off, and then finished up the rest of the shape. Uh, in addition, you're also going to need to construct a, uh, a regular, you know, two-way cleat. I don't know if you can see that really well. All I did was take a, took a couple pieces of the scrap wood included in the kit, uh, basically cut out the shape. Cut off a couple sections here, a couple sections here, glued it together with a smaller piece, and I've been uh, kind of filing away at it, and it's really come come to look pretty good. 
So it really does look like a convincing little cleat there. This is going to be mold this is going to be mounted to the uh, front of the mast just like this. I didn't pre-stain it because I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be using varnish on it. The other thing I did that I think was incredibly helpful is I took my uh, again the most invaluable triangular file and I basically went right in the middle of the cleat like that and what this did is it contoured it a little bit to get it set up to be mounted on the mast so a little bit of you can't see it but there's a just a little bit of arc on the bottom of the cleat and uh, that'll make it go on really nice so coming up on the home stretch here I did uh, finish off the uh, or a little bit building the second one. I'm a little nervous about that because I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to match up as readily as I did the last one. But we'll see. So uh, I'll get the sail rig finished and then move on to the next door. Okay, this might look a little drastically different. The uh, sail dried. Managed to get it in the socket. Uh, also managed to get the uh, snotter boom here set. Uh, it really was pretty easy actually. Used a heavy gauge needle, basically used the line, sewed it up and around, left enough slack to go through the top of the mast, all the way down to the cleat. I will tidy up the uh, the lines a little more. If you don't know how to tie a bowline, you may want to get a YouTube video on how to do that. So, uh, left enough line and uh, glued the hard point so that the snotter boom goes through. This whole thing can be taken down. The instructions said that you're supposed to basically loop the line, which I did. Looped it around one of the uh, back oar locks and then uh, kind of just left it there. You'll also notice that I did finish up the uh, line bucket by coiling line endlessly and repetitively in there. I didn't have to fill the whole thing, but I got enough done that I felt pretty comfortable with it. So, I'm not super happy with the way the sail looks. It looks a little juvenile to me, but uh, I hadn't really intended to display the sail anyway. This is how the uh, snotter cleat works. If you look, basically there's a notch in the bottom. So you're going to need about a two and a half inch line. You're going to need to tie two bowlins, one on top, one bottom. Figure eight in a very handcuff looking uh, situation. One goes on the bottom, one goes across the cleat, and that basically holds the boom in place. And again, none of this was super glued in place, it all just kind of sits together. You can take the boom off and wrap it up if you don't want to display it that way. So, uh, oh, nice, huh? Move it back a little bit. Or into the camera, or somewhere. There we go. So uh, basically, in, according to the instructions, the dories were only sailed when you had a uh, basically a stern following wind. The rig is not uh, generally hardy enough to sail uh, or tack around a lot, uh, as per the since you don't have a dedicated jim boom. So uh, they rode pretty much upwind and just sailed downwind. So far, so good. One last order to do. And then I'm going to put a uh, coat of white paint on the outside, and that'll be the end of the project. Okay, if you've stuck with me this long, thanks for uh, sticking that out. A uh, few more things. We are really coming up here on the end stretch here. Uh, you may notice the boat looks a little different. I've taken the sail down, and uh, what you can do is basically you uh, fold it in kind of on the reefs where the lines are on the actual sail. So you reef it in, you put the uh, put the boom down, and the the uh, piece of line from the snotter cleat, you can actually run it through itself and hook it onto one of the uh, one of the uh, oar lock pins and that kind of holds it in place. Uh, the line that I had laying there I just kind of hung off the cleat 
and uh, the back two pieces of the mast kind of just stick in towards the end of the rail here. So it looks looks pretty sharp when it's all folded up. Looks very busy. So uh, what's nice though is that you can completely unfold this and put it right back into a sail rig just like the real boat, which is pretty cool. Uh, off camera, what I've been dreading the entire time actually went like clockwork. So I have two matching oars, including the handles. So that went pretty sweet. It was nice using the uh, basically one oar in front of the other to kind of match them uh, and uh, kind of cut around it. That would save me a little bit of time. So I don't know if I could recommend doing one oar at a time, but it seemed to work for me. So uh, those two won't go in the boat. Uh, they probably wouldn't have stowed oars like that. They would have had them both, you know, paddle out. So your your preference for however you want to make that look. Okay, and uh, of course the all important line bucket looks a little plain Jane, but I'm about to change that. Uh, all buckets and uh, barrels were held together with staves. All I did to make a stave is basically cut along the end of a uh, eight and a half by eleven piece of uh, kind of thick construction paper. This particular piece came as a backing piece in a uh, notebook, so I don't think that matters. But got some uh, lovely white glue. I pre-measured this out. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of white glue on my staves. So uh, the staves are kind of eyeballed. You're not really going to tell the thickness differences. So just kind of. You do not need a lot of white glue. The nice thing about white glue is it wipes right off. And you won't end up gluing your fingers together, playing for towels. So we'll be uh, careful with, it, with your line. Just kind of make sure you don't get any sawdust in there, because it appears to be all oh, perfect. Thanks for that. It's an alarm going off. So uh, you get this Santa Claus belt kind of effect, but uh, it does add quite a nice contrast to it. One more piece. I don't know what the thickness is on these, but uh, it's pretty thin stuff. Trying to get any fingerprints on the, uh, if you can help it. Get the final wipe down. And, uh, that's all there is. That looks really sharp. So, nice. Of course, the line was glued inside. So that makes one more accessory to offset the color in the boat. Okay. So there you have the uh, the guts and the innards looking pretty nice. So, all right, last step, the very last step is uh, you notice I still have not gone around to painting it yet. So uh, we're gonna have to do that. Sorry. I'm going to have to do that before I get started. I did drill two holes, and those go right underneath the uh, mahogany 
towards the bow, only through the basswood, not through the uh, top of the rail or anything. And we're, what I'm going to do with that is uh, basically I'm going to rig the line, tie off a couple knots in the end, and leave a uh, basically loop. Same thing in the back. There's two existing holes. You can see line goes in. All it does is basically creates a carrying handle so the guys can pick these up either using hoists or their hands or whatever to nest the boat. So, almost finished. I don't know what I'm going to do with my time now that I don't have you guys to uh, watch this YouTube video. But uh, anyway, thanks. See you in a minute. Well, as much as I hate to be the bringer of bad news, it looks like this YouTube video is winding to an absolute close. A uh, couple final points. The uh, hull was painted white. I got my uh, spouse's gentle opinion on that. And she said that I was, since I'd painted the inside gray, I was pretty much committed to paint the outside. So I did. I painted it acrylic white. It seems very plain Jane, but actually the color offset's pretty pleasing. Uh, especially since I did the gunnels in uh, uh, just glaze. I did tie off a knot. This is the lifting uh, lifting handle portion on the bow. And I have the lifting handle portion on the stern. Uh, as seen before, uh, there's really nothing else done. I'm going to leave the mast down, probably for display. I kind of like the way it looks. Uh, I do like putting the sail up, but uh, as far as that goes, I think the uh, the busyness of the boat appeals to me. So, uh, anyway, a uh, couple final notes on the boat. Um, the materials list I'll give you in a little while, but uh, as you can see, uh, I still got my uh, plans hung up. The uh, the big thing about the plans is that even though I've created a single model out of the parts provided, the plans, specifically the three sheets, contain the absolute uh, materials list if I want to replicate this. Uh, one of the sheets has a template for cutting more pieces. It has a list of the thicknesses of the wood, the basswood. So uh, unlike other model kits that you could purchase, uh, once you get done with the instructions, most people just toss them in the trash. I highly encourage, nay, I plead and beg that uh, should you buy any Blue Jacket kits uh, specifically, please do not throw out the plans and instructions once you're done. Uh, I know that uh, there's a big movement to not be hoarders in this country, the United States specifically, but these plans are the most valuable part of the kit. And should you get an itch, if you want to make a companion boat, or uh, I don't know, maybe you want to see if you can make another one see, to see how it nests inside this one, then uh, you will need these plans. So, uh, you know, if you get an itch or a hankering to see if you could uh, build a better kit, or maybe build it in slightly less time, or mass produce these, or whatever you want to do, please, please, please keep the plans, and uh, they will serve you well. So I'll be folding and rolling up mine and putting them in uh, my tube O plans, which are made with a six inch piece of uh, PVC pipe and a cap. And that keeps my plans nice and safe. I don't have any plans to uh, display this boat quite yet. Uh, I will be displaying it at the uh, Philadelphia Ship Model, Ship Model Society. Uh, we meet uh, usually the first Thursday of the month because of the winter weather, it's been a little tough. But uh, I encourage uh, anybody who's into building model boats, please seek out a club in your area if there is one, and uh, go attend a meeting. You'll find them a, a very knowledgeable and uh, expert group of folks. My last shout out is to the, uh, the uh, Nautical Research Guild. They are a fantastic resource. Uh, it's minimal amount of money to uh, join. You get uh, I think it's four or five magazines a year. Really well photographed. They show, uh, some of them have various plans in them. Great group. Nautical Research Guild, if you're into this. And of course, uh, 
buy as many model boat books as you can. They are not readily available at Barnes and Noble or Borders. You'll have to order them from Amazon or Aid Books or something of that nature. But uh, there are some great ones out there. Anyway, that is all for me. Thank you for your patience and watching the video. I believe my total build time on this was 17 hours. A lot of that was setting up the camera and going through several steps to try and set up shots. But uh, you probably could build it a little quicker, a little faster if you wanted to. I did take my time. I uh, really sanded down some areas. So if this YouTube video seems long, it uh, probably is nothing can compare to the actual time it took me. So you get to sit by and uh, sip coffee and watch this from a darkened monitor with little or no glue in your fingers and uh, enjoy my trials and tribulations. Thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more videos up uh, if and when my wife ever forgives me for how much time I spent on this boat, which will happen. So, be supportive spouses. Thank you for watching, and uh, good luck on your build.